Today we will see what is quaternion. You have seen complex numbers. Okay, what is a complex number? Complex number is a number that consists of both a real part and a imaginary part. Okay, the real part is say A, the imaginary part is say B. Then the complex number is denoted by A plus IB, I standing for the imaginary part. Okay, now this quaternion is an extension of complex numbers. Okay, so say you have, you can write a number as a plus bi plus cj plus dk. Okay, then it is called as a quaternion. Uh, you can imagine that this part b, okay, maybe it's being split into three components corresponding to your x, y, and z axis. Okay, so this num complex number a plus ib is now being written as a plus I bi, i may, uh, corresponding to say the x axis j corresponding to the component along the y-axis and d uh, uh, corresponding to the component along the z-axis. So a quaternion is an extension of the two-dimensional complex numbers. Now this quaternion A plus BI plus CJ plus DK is written as A, B, C, D within square brackets. Okay, A corresponding to the real part, B, C, D corresponding to the um, three components I, J, K. Now, what are the properties that are satisfied by these quaternions? Okay, sometimes these, uh, these uh, quaternions satisfy the following identities. These are known as Hamilton's roots. Okay. I squared. Uh, this is the same what we have seen in with a complex number. I into I is minus one. Okay. So our I we have defined in complex number as I equal to root of minus one. Okay. This is just an extension of the same thing. I square equal to J square equal to K square equal to minus one. Okay. Uh, same way I into J is equal to minus j into i that is the direction is changing now okay uh, equal to k okay and j into k equal to minus k into j equal to i okay now uh, k into i equal to minus i into k equal to j okay so these are the identities that are followed by quaternions uh, quaternion usually you get short notes wherein you have to put in the properties of the quaternions the definition etc okay yeah so next we see how we add two quaternions okay suppose a and b are two quaternions defined by a equal to a1 plus a2i plus a3j plus a4k and b equal to b1 plus b2i plus b3j plus b 4 k then the sum of a and b the two quaternions is given by you add the corresponding components so that is a1 plus b1 plus a2 plus b2 into i plus a3 plus b3 into j plus a4 plus b4 into k okay so the sum of the two quaternions is given by the sum of the corresponding parts Next, we see how product or multiplication is done. Okay, you follow this multiplication table. Okay, one i j k. Okay. So one into one is one. One into i is i, etc. Okay, i into one is one. I into i is minus one. We have already seen i square is minus one. Okay, i into j is k. This also we have seen. I into k is minus j. This is corresponding to the identities that we get this table. Okay, now when you go to multiply, uh, 
the two quaternions okay the product of two quaternions a and b is given by this formula okay a1 b1 minus a2 b2 minus a3 b3 minus a4 b4 that is your constant part or the real part the imaginary part a1 b2 plus a2 b1 plus a3 b4 minus a4 b3 the whole thing into i and so on okay this seems to be very large but then we will see an easier representation for this product or multiplication okay so right now this is a formula that is used for quaternions we have an alternate representation for this quaternion we have said that a equal to a1 plus a2i plus a3j plus a4k okay now this part being the uh, uh, imaginary part or the vector part and this is the real part okay so we can write this quaternion as a pair of a scalar part and a vector part okay the scalar part is nothing but a1 here and the vector part is this one okay a2i plus a3j plus a4k okay so that is what we are representing this with a square brackets okay so a quaternion alternately can be represented by the scalar part and the vector part okay now what is the advantage of this we will see now multiplication we saw we had this huge formula okay instead if we use in this scalar vector form we can easily do the multiplication of two quaternions q1 q2 defined by s1 v1 s2 v2 as s1 into s2 this is a scalar part okay s1 is a scalar quantity s2 is a scalar quantity so this is a normal multiplication next now minus v1 dot v2 okay v1 is a vector v2 is a vector now v1 dot v2, dot v2 is the dot product or the scalar product would be so the scalar part is given by s1 into s2 minus v1 dot v2 okay now the vector part is given by s1 into v2 plus s2 into v1 plus v1 cross v2 okay now these uh, are all the vector components okay each one of them is a vector and so you will end up with a vector okay so uh, q1 dot q2 we can write by using this formula or we can calculate using this formula okay now though this seems to be difficult i know we generally once we look at vectors uh, we get the apprehension oh i have to do dot product cross product etc it is a bit uh, difficult for us but then uh, when uh, you go to hardware we have very good hardware systems uh, very good when i when i say it means uh, hardware which can accurately calculate and hardware which can uh, do the computations at a very fast rate okay so we have uh, such hardware available with us and so it is easy for us to calculate uh, to do this uh, multiplication okay that is a cross product and the vector product where do we use these quaternions why are we studying them when we are doing graphics okay the they are very useful in a number of computer graphics procedures including generation of fractal objects what is a fractal object one such object is what we have seen in the lab that is the sierpinski uh, gasket okay you see that the same component is getting repeated over and over again and we get a beautiful picture at the end okay or uh, in a uh, simpler object is a uh, sierpinski uh, triangle okay you have a equilateral triangle see and you take the midpoints of the three sides you join them 
you get a triangle um, you get a figure like this okay that is one equilateral triangle gets divided into four equilateral triangles okay suppose you repeat the process for each of the outer triangles that is this triangle this triangle and this triangle then you get this figure okay now if you go to repeat the same procedure for each of the three end triangles here so you get one two three you repeat again you repeat the same thing for these three triangles and you repeat it for these three triangles that is this this and this you will end up with this figure okay you again repeat for each of these you will get this figure and so on okay that is a simple design okay is being repeated and you get a beautiful picture at the end okay this is the basis of your fractal geometry okay that is you have the property of self symmetry in that in producing such figures quaternions are very useful okay we'll see another example of a quaternion you see this tree okay all that this is made up of is one second. that is it okay this is the only figure that is drawn here okay you see that you get this right yeah okay this is one okay now you draw a smaller version of this here okay so the two split ends you are drawing this now you get four split ends at the four split ends again you repeat the same drawing you get eight split ends at the eight split ends again you draw okay just repeating the simple diagram you have got this beautiful tree like uh, picture or a bow picture okay so uh, this is your fractal geometry okay so in creating such fractal geometric figures quaternions are very useful next quaternions require less space storage space than 4 by 4 matrices okay 4 by 4 matrices you know you they take 16 spaces whereas here quaternions take very less space and they give you a very efficient method for generating a rotation about an arbitrary selected axis okay two classes before we have seen how to rotate an object about an arbitrary axis okay the whole class we went on doing okay we rotated it about the z axis so that sorry first we rotated the axis uh, we translated the axis so that the uh, axis um one end point fell on the origin then we rotated it about the z axis uh, uh, so that it falls on the x y plane and then we rotated it so that it falls along the z axis and so on okay so we did a set of Uh, a sequence of transformations okay all that those calculations and we did that huge uh, calculation of calculating the alpha beta etc okay that entire process can be reduced when we use a quaternion we'll just see how it is okay the rotation about any axis passing through the coordinate origin is obtained by the quaternion q equal to s comma v okay uh, say u is the unit vector along the arbitrary axis that is passing through the origin then you can give the rotation quaternion the quaternion after rotation as s comma v where s is cos theta by 2 now what is theta theta is the angle of rotation okay for any rotation you need three points okay one the axis of rotation the point of rotation and the angle of rotation okay the point of rotation here is the origin axis of rotation is u u is the unit vector along the axis of rotation and theta is the angle of rotation okay always angle we take in the anti clockwise direction okay if that is the case 
the rotated quaternion is given by s comma v s is the scalar part which is given by cos theta by 2 the value cos theta by 2 and v is the vector part which is sin theta by 2 into u okay that is the magnitude is sin theta by 2 direction is along the rotation axis u okay so this is the rotated quaternion that we get so for any point to be rotated by this quaternion okay say the point p is your x y z okay the coordinates of the point p is x y z then the rotated the point p can be represented by the quaternion p equal to 0 comma p okay so yeah the scalar part is 0 vector part is represented by the coordinate x y z now when you go to rotate this okay about the origin you get p dash equal to q into p into q to the power of minus 1 okay q is the quaternion s comma v okay now q inverse q to the power of minus 1 is q inverse okay the scalar part remains the same the vector part reverses the direction that is minus v okay So the transform quaternion is given by p dash equal to 0 into 0 p dash. Okay, where p dash is given by the formula s square p. What is s? s is the scalar part of the quaternion s comma v. Okay, v are after rotation of the point p by angle theta. Okay, the quaternion you get is Q S comma V. So for the rotated point, the quaternion is P dash. Okay, that is given by 0 comma P dash, small p dash, where P dash is S square into P. S is the scalar part. Okay, S square into P plus D into P dot V. Okay, this is again the dot product. This is the cross product. And again, cross product of the cross product okay so this is the formula that we get yeah for us to remember it's difficult but then since we have very efficient hardware it is very easy to calculate this value so now the transformation p dash equal to Q into P into Q inverse is equivalent to what you had done R theta equal to T inverse into Rx minus 1 of uh, yeah, Rx inverse alpha Ry that is rotation about Y axis inverse by beta into Rz theta. This is what we have done two, three classes before when we did rotation about an arbitrary axis. Okay. This is the set of transformations that we got okay or for rotation we got these five rotations to be done okay as a sequence we said okay now instead of this entire thing we have this to be calculated okay now this the rotation part transformation matrix can be written as mr theta in quaternion form it can be written as 1 minus 2 b square now what is a b c uh, the vector part b okay the transform quaternion say you have the scalar part as s and the vector part as v we know that v has got i component j component k component okay so a b c okay so i component is a b j component is b and k component is c then your mr theta or the rotation matrix is given by 1 minus 2 b square minus 2 c square 2 a b minus 2 sc s is the scalar part 
scalar value and 2ac plus 2sb okay the second row is 2ab plus 2sc 1 minus 2a square minus 2c square 2bc minus 2sa uh, 2ac minus 2sb 2bc plus 2sa 1 minus 2a square minus 2b square okay now here you know that these the vector part can be written in terms of the rotation angle that is this vector v is given by sine theta by 2 we have already seen okay and s is cos theta by 2 suppose i apply this here and you know that cos square theta by 2 minus sine square theta by 2 is cos theta okay again from trigonometric uh, ratios we know this okay and cos theta you can also be written as 1 minus 2 sine square theta by 2 also sine theta is 2 cos theta by 2 sine theta by 2 okay suppose i substitute all this into this equation then i will get my mr theta as ux square into 1 minus cos x okay what is ux that is the component the x component of corresponding to this unit vector u okay and u y is the y component of the unit vector u and u z is the z component along the unit vector u okay so the vector along the u axis okay is uh, now divided into three components u x u y u z that's it okay so that can be written as mr theta equal to this entire thing okay so this formula that you have okay the matrix mr theta can be reduced to this form okay. now the end this is only the rotation part okay for the entire transformation you need to do t inverse that is translation inverse uh, the, uh, you are rotating the point they're translating the point to the origin okay that one this is your rotation part and this is again rotating the axis back to the uh, point reference point okay t so this gives you the rotation about the arbitrary axis in terms of quaternions okay since we are able to do the vector and uh, uh, the vector operations easily Quaternions are used here. 